Hey everybody, I am back again with yet another video and this week I am on the biggest Starblood stalker kick. I just finished my second fighter of the warband, Clactrock, and today I'm going to be showing you what I did to paint him. I decided that I wanted to break up my color scheme just a little bit and make him a gator inspired deep green rather than the traditional turquoise, but um, I'm pretty happy with how he came out, so let's go ahead and get started. So to start off with, I primed him this cream color and then I'm going in right away with a deep green and I am just using a makeup sponge to apply this to all of the high parts of the model. For some of the more difficult to reach areas, I did have to go in with a dry brush just to make sure I got that color where I needed it. Next, I'm going in with this contrast paint and I am placing it everywhere. This is Skeleton Horde, it's a very, very light brown. So on the underside where it's just going straight over the primer, it's gonna make it look kind of like a creamy brown. But then on the upper side, it makes the green look more gatory. So that was what I was going for with that. Next, I am mixing dark stone and camo green to get a really, really dark, dark green. And I'm going over all of the spikes down his spine, all the way down to his tail. I'm also stippling some of this really, really dark green onto the scales that are directly adjacent to the scales in the center, just to make that blend more gradual. Then I go in over the whole thing with strong tone to make it even darker because I wasn't quite satisfied yet. Next, I'm taking this khaki color and I'm going over all of the high parts of his belly. So this is including these little parts of his neck here, as well as all of his rippling lizard muscles. <laughs> Then I decided to go ahead and do his eyes. Doing the eyes is one of my favorite parts of doing a model, not because I'm particularly good at it, but I just think that it makes the model come to life and I like um, getting that part over with. So I'm just going in with this bright, bright yellow. I'm going in with confidence, just do it. Just, just do it. If you mess up, you can always color correct later. And you wanna make sure you get a nice thick dot of paint in the eye socket. And then I'm taking an even tinier brush and going in and just putting a sliver of black, trying to space it out so that it's directly in the center. For the other side, I did have to color correct because I got out of the lines when I put my yellow in, but it was easy enough to just put some dark green over and then put some more contrast paint over and it came out fine. I'm doing the inside of the mouth with this um, red hole color. It's my absolute favorite inside of mouth color by Vallejo. And I'm just kind of flinging it around in there knowing that after I'm done with this, I will individually pick out each individual tooth. So I'm not too worried about keeping it clean for right now. I am painting his teeth um, Screaming Skull, and I didn't film this next part, but I do go over the whole mouth with Strong Tone afterward, because he doesn't really seem like the type of guy who would have pearly white teeth like this. <laughs> Alright, that really brought him to life. I'm very happy with how he's turning out. Now it's time to get started on this armor. So I'm taking this light, pale, gray-blue color and just placing this all over the inside parts. I wanted to make sure that I added some light colors, because so far he's looking pretty dark. So I feel like this added some good contrast then i'm going to go over with apothecary white contrast paint which is like a very very light light gray and place a couple layers of this on all the places that i just painted the pale gray blue color i was going for a sort of temple -y spanish style vibe but i'm not really quite sure if i achieved that but i'm not mad once that is dry, I am going to do a quick little edge highlight with the side of my brush on this high point here. Don't do this with the tip of your brush. Bad things will happen. Use the side. All right. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and do all of these teeny tiny triangle details on the whole model. They're all over the place. I'm using red and blue. I'm using a teeny, teeny, tiny little brush and just taking the time to go in and pick out each of these triangles. Thank you. 
I felt like I was just a couple shades too close to being Spider-Man-y, so I decided to mute both of those colors with this uh, wash, and I feel like the overall effect came out well. I realized that I missed this middle part on his Mace Club thing, so I decided to paint it the same sort of temple color that I did for the armor. It's finally time, you guys. I've been putting it off, but I am now going in with these two shades of gold. One is Retributor Armor, the other one is just a very, very bright gold that I can't remember the name of. And I'm mixing them half and half, about 50% of each, and I'm just going over all of the gold on this armor. There is a lot, it takes a long time, and I'm making sure to come at it from multiple angles, so you don't just wanna look at your model from the top down and do it like that. You wanna flip your model over, go from the underside, and make sure you're being very thorough and as tidy as you can for this step. I did switch out to a teeny tiny brush to get some of these harder to reach areas just to make sure that I'm being as tidy as possible. I am going to highlight it now. So, oh, the color was Auric Gold. I just saw it. Okay. I'm mixing that same gold color that I mixed with the Retributor Armor. I'm mixing just that gold with some yellow to give it a little bit more pigment. I'm going to do some edge highlights over the rest of the armor. All right, that was a Kellyan, Achillean um, green, which is actually this deep blue contrast paint. I'm going over the shield now and I'm being very, very careful, obviously not to ruin the triangular detailing. I did a couple of coats of that and then I'm going in with this bright turquoise color and a makeup sponge to go ahead and highlight the shield. Now this is one of the instances it's better to use a sponge rather than a dry brush because I have a lot better control over where I'm putting the color and I can delicately place it on really, really close to the details that I did, but not worrying about brushing over them like I would be if I was dry brushing this. Alternatively, you could also plan your model better than I did and get all of these types of steps done before you do detailing, but ah. Okay, so I'm going in with khaki and I am just going to pull out all of the spikes on the model, this little rope that's hanging around his belt. He has claws that I paint this color. He has tons of spikes on his shield as well as his um, club. So I'm just going to go ahead and pull those out now. And then I did end up highlighting it with Screaming Skull, which is just a lighter shade of the same color, just to pull those out a little bit more because they were kind of blending in with the armor and I didn't want that. I wanted them to stick out. This is where I just decided to finish all of the details on the model, including the bands around the arm and the jewels around his waist. We are moving on to the base. I am mixing Monster Brown and this sand color to get a medium light sand brownie color. I don't really know how to describe this. I'm just placing it on the base in a couple thick coats. I'm going over with the Raiklin Flesh Shade and just distributing this pretty heavily throughout. Then once this is dry, I'm picking out out all of the small rocks with a gray color pretty straightforward and then after this I do a quick dry brush with screaming skull over both the sand and the rocks As a final step, I think take a Thonian camo shade and apply this color just to the base of each rock to give it a nice effect. This is it, this is the big moment. My favorite part of painting any model is applying the black rim. We did it, we are done. Thank you guys so much for watching. Here is a last look at Clack Truck and I will see you in my next video. Bye.